In our series, A More Perfect Union, we aim to show that what unites us as Americans is far greater than what divides us. Today, one of Congressman John Lewis's greatest victories on Capitol Hill was passing the bill that established the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture that's in Washington, D.C. Lewis was known as the godfather of that museum after fighting for its creation for decades. Chip Reed shows us how Lewis's legacy and advocacy is entwined with its success. We do not want our freedom gradually, but we want to be free now. At just 23 years old, budding civil rights icon John Lewis delivered a historic speech during the 1963 march on Washington. About five decades later, he would be back on the National Mall. This time as Congressman John Lewis to give a speech at the opening of the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture. This place is more than a building. It is a dream come true. Lewis introduced 13 different bills starting in the 1980s to create the museum. He was met with opposition at every point along the way. Once we approve this museum, we will be called upon by other minority groups and they will be justified in doing so to provide museums for their particular groups. But Lewis never gave up, spending nearly 15 years pushing. And in 2003, he was there when President Bush signed legislation to make it a reality. The museum opened in 2016, about 28 years after Lewis first proposed it. Our Gail King asked him what it was like to walk through the museum's doors for the first time. I've been holding back tears because so many of the exhibits, so many of this museum remind me of the struggle. Lonnie Bunch is the head of the Smithsonian Institution and oversees its 19 museums. He was the first director of this one. John Lewis felt that history was a valuable tool to help people live their lives, that people needed to understand and draw inspiration from the past. The eight-story museum is a reflection of 400 years of African-American history, everything from slavery, struggle, and triumph to black culture, entertainment, and achievement. He wanted to make sure that 20, 50, 100 years from now, these stories of our rich culture would be remembered. Lewis did not just help imagine and create the museum. He himself is part of the history displayed within its walls. Good trouble, as Lewis called it, fighting for justice and equality despite arrests and police beatings. In the last weeks of the freedom fighter's life came the death of George Floyd and nationwide protests against police brutality. Hundreds of demonstrators swarmed the museum. In one of his final interviews last month with CBS This Morning, Lewis applauded the protesters. It's another step down a very, very long road toward freedom, justice for all humankind. And as that road is traveled by a new generation, Lewis's legacy will live on in the museum he helped build. It is my hope that each and every person who visit this beautiful museum will walk away deeply inspired. The museum is currently closed due to the coronavirus, but interim director Spencer Crew told us it will open as soon as it is safe. He also encourages people to go to the museum's website to learn all about the role that African-Americans have played in shaping this great nation. Gail? I think that's a really good idea. Chip, talk about filling me up. That's what you just did. John Lewis, when you think about him, life well lived, job well done. The epitome of goodness was fighting for justice till the very end till his body gave out. Thank you so much, Chip. It was Absolutely. really, really terrific. We'll, we'll be right back. back.